So we are in the season of Lent now, and today I'm starting a new sermon series called The Cruciform Life. It'll take us through the season of Lent using Paul's letter to the Galatians to help us understand and and unpack a bit more what it means to be crucified with Christ, as Paul famously wrote in this letter. A cruciform life is a life shaped by the cross. And in a world that is increasingly shaped by the self, nothing could be more timely. But a cruciform life is not a life that we can create or discover for ourselves. It can only be revealed to us as a gift of grace. So let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for the gift of your word to us this morning. And ask, as always, that by your Holy Spirit, you would plant this word deeply within our hearts and cause it to grow and bear good fruit for the sake of your kingdom. This we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Starting with the opening of Paul's letter, this is Galatians 1, verses 1 through 12. Paul, an apostle sent not from men nor by a man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead, and all the brothers and sisters with me, to the churches in Galatia, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins to rescue us from the present evil age according to the will of our God and Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you to live in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel, which is really no gospel at all. Evidently, some people are throwing you into confusion and are trying to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than the one we preached to you, let them be under God's curse. As we have already said, so now I say again, if anybody is preaching to you a gospel other than what you accepted, let them be under God's curse. Am I now trying to win the approval of human beings or of God? Or am I trying to please people? If I were still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. I want you to know brothers and sisters, that the gospel I preached is not of human origin. I did not receive it from any man, nor was I taught it. Rather, I received it by revelation from Jesus Christ. Again, this is the word of the Lord. Perhaps the greatest need that we have as human beings is to have a sense of purpose for our lives. In 2002, when Rick Warren published The Purpose Driven Life, it quickly became the best-selling nonfiction hardback in history and the second most translated book ever besides the Bible. Recent studies have shown that, that having a sense of purpose is correlated with better life outcomes across the board. Having a sense of purpose doesn't just make you happier, it makes you healthier. People with a sense of purpose live longer. They sleep better. They have lower blood pressure, fewer heart attacks and strokes, and their relationships are healthier and more fulfilling and last longer as well. That sense of purpose is correlated with those better outcomes all across the board. Having a sense of purpose is arguably the greatest need that we have as human beings. Paul knew his purpose. In the first three words 
of his letter, Paul clearly stated what his purpose in life was. He said, Paul, an apostle. That was Paul's purpose, to be an apostle for Jesus Christ. In the, the Greek-speaking world, the word apostle referred to a personal representative of the king, someone whose job was to speak officially on the king's behalf. Today we might use the word ambassador. And that was Paul's purpose in life, to be an apostle or an ambassador for the gospel or good news of Jesus Christ. Representing the good news of Jesus was not just Paul's living. It was his whole life. He knew exactly what his purpose was. But he didn't discover it. Nor did he determine it for himself. His life's purpose as an apostle was revealed to him by Jesus Christ. Paul said emphatically in this letter, The gospel I preached is not of human origin. I did not receive it from any man, nor was I taught it. Rather, I received it by revelation from Jesus Christ. When Paul was on his way to Damascus to persecute the church, he was ambushed by Jesus Christ and converted directly because of this encounter with Jesus. He didn't discover his purpose by going to the right college or pursuing the right career or taking a personality test or inventory to match him with his gifts. He did not determine his purpose himself. It was revealed to him by Jesus, quote, who gave himself for our sins, which is another way of saying that Paul's purpose was revealed by Jesus on the cross, which is where Jesus gave himself for our sins. It was the cross of Christ that revealed Paul's purpose to him. Now, the reason Paul stressed this point at the opening of his letter to the Galatians is because the Galatians were turning away from the cross and from what Jesus' death on the cross meant. They were turning away from that toward a gospel of self-determination. Instead of trusting that the cross was enough, they started trusting themselves. Instead of a cross-shaped life, a cruciform life, they were turning back to a self-shaped life. What happened was Paul went to the area of Galatia as a missionary, and he planted a number of churches. And he, he preached to them the gospel of grace, the gospel of Christ crucified, that Christ's death on the cross is enough for your sins. Jesus plus Nothing equals salvation. That's the gospel that Paul had preached to them. All we have to do, he said, is receive this amazing gift by faith, trusting that Christ alone is sufficient. So that's where the Galatians started. But after Paul left and continued his missionary journey, some other missionaries came into the region of Galatia, and they preached something different. They preached to these now Christian churches. They preached that to be saved, a person had to believe in Jesus, yes, but also needed to obey certain laws from the Old Testament, specifically circumcision and dietary rules. These laws were seen as the bedrock of a moral life. And so these new missionaries were saying, yes, Jesus, but also this, to really belong to God. And when Paul found out about it, he was furious. I'm astonished, he wrote. And I imagine he wrote it like in all caps, like yelling. <laughs> I'm astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you to live in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel, which is really no gospel at all. Grace is good news, but when you add other requirements, 
it's no longer grace and it's no longer good news. The Galatians were backsliding into a self-shaped life of trying to earn salvation through good behavior and good choices. Saving themselves had now become their purpose in life. One of the biggest lies in history is that you are the purpose of your own life. This lie takes different forms at different times and and places, but it's still around today. The lie that your life's purpose is yourself. Our own culture is and has been for a while now obsessed with the self. We're told that our highest purpose in life is to discover who we really are, to to find ourselves. And recently, it's actually becoming even more popular, not just to say that we should discover ourselves or find ourselves, but to decide for ourselves who we are, to create ourselves. Some of the most popular TED Talks over the last five years are pushing this exact idea that you can create your self, that the self is a blank canvas and only you are in control of this sacred self. And the people who push this claim often promise nothing less than salvation. We are promised that that finding or creating our authentic self will save us from depression, from anxiety, from insecurity, from unhappiness, from injustice, and the list goes on. That if we could just tweak our self enough so that it's true and perfectly authentic, then we will be saved from all the negative things in life. And so we become the purpose of our own life. which is a tragedy because you are the smallest purpose your life could have. If you are your own life's purpose, then your purpose in life can only ever be as big as you by yourself. And and you're great. Don't get me wrong. But I think we'd all agree that just me is a rather small purpose to have. God made you for more than just yourself. God's purpose for your life has always been about more than just you. That's why you are happiest when you're not living for yourself, but are living for others, doing something for others, giving, being generous, being kind. You are happiest when you do those things because it is beyond just yourself. And it's why the cycle of trying to find or create yourself only leads to more disappointment in the end. Even if you could, at some hypothetical point in your life, discover or create your fully authentic self, the moment you do, you're going to want to change it again. It's like remodeling your house. The second it's done, yeah, it looks great, but you can already see what you would do differently (laughs) next time. There is no such thing as a point at which we are truly, fully, perfectly authentic and then stay there. That's a myth. To put it more bluntly, it's a lie. I've never once heard someone at a funeral get up and say, well, they spent their life trying to figure out who they really were, and they finally did it. Yesterday, we celebrated Ruth Peterson's life. Nobody talked about whether she was her authentic self. They talked about her grace and her kindness and her compassion to kindergarten students and to family and to friends. They talked about her in the context of how she lived for others. And that is a life much bigger than just herself. 
And that's what we would love to have people say of us at our funeral someday, and there's a reason for that. God has a bigger purpose for your life than just yourself. And that's a good thing. And like Paul, your purpose is revealed by the cross of Christ. Jesus said, if any would follow me, they must not discover themselves, not create themselves, they must deny themselves and take up their cross. The cross is where our self and, and the whole project of trying to discover or create our self, that whole thing is crucified, dead, and buried on the cross. Remember that before the cross became a piece of jewelry or home decor, it was an instrument of death. On the cross, we die to ourselves. And what a relief that is. What freedom Jesus offers us at the cross. What a precious gift to surrender our own life and our doomed efforts to save ourselves and in exchange receive the glorious gift of Christ's own life and Christ's purpose for us. The wonderful cross bids us come and die and find that we may truly live. That is the beginning of the cruciform life. It is not a life that we choose or create. It is revealed to us as a gift of grace. The cross of Jesus reveals our true purpose of serving Jesus Christ. That's how Paul phrases it. Our true purpose of serving Jesus Christ. He said, if I were still trying to please people, how many of us feel like that? Still trying to please people. If I were still trying to do that, I would not be and here's his purpose and his identity, a servant of Jesus Christ. If you are tired of people pleasing, of over and over and again trying to tweak your identity until it's just right, of trying to save yourself, then enlist in the service of Jesus Christ. His yoke is easy, his burden is light, and his cross is enough for you. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen.